This is Robert L. Ripley, returning from an expedition to Africa and the Near East, where I went in search of, believe it or not, curiosities. I am now 200 miles from New York City and have chosen this unique method of leaving the steamship Leviathan in order to reach land a half day before the boat arrives. Let me help you with this can of film. No, no, I'm holding on to this. This is the movie record of my expedition. I'm showing it tonight for the first time at the Explorers Club. Fellow club members, this being a gathering of explorers, I claim the privilege of addressing you not as an explorer in the strict sense of the word, but as an explorer in the realm of the curious, the strange, and the unbelievable. Believe it or not, you are in darkest Africa, and you're looking at snow-capped mountains. The Atlas Mountains are almost as high and just as majestic as the Rocky Mountains. Africa is not only hot, but cold. The desert is deceiving. You can fry eggs on its sand in the daytime and freeze ice cream at night. One time, a caravan of 20 people froze to death on the equator beneath the blazing African sun while crossing these mountains. Africa is not an arid waste of sand. There are as many beautiful wildflowers growing there as in California. These flowers given me by the little Berber girl were blooming on the very edge of the Sahara Desert. This is the Dajama El Fana, which means the meeting place of the dead, so called because it was once a slave market where runaway slaves were beheaded. Believe it or not, Today, the meeting place of the dead is the liveliest place in all Africa. While we are here, let me show you an interesting native product. These are locusts or grasshoppers, plague insects that eat the farmer's crops. But the Mohammedans even up the score. They turn right around and eat the grasshoppers. The East is full of strange and religious superstitions. Many of them are hard to believe. Here, for example... Every true Muslim shaves his head, but he never shaves it completely. He always leaves a single lock of hair as a handle, so that after death, Mohammed can lift him by it to heaven. He should also take lessons on the harp. This is the most sacred spot in Morocco, the Mosque of Moulay Idris. Beyond that door is the Sanctuary of Sinners. Once inside, all thieves, gangsters, murderers, lawbreakers of all kinds are safe. The hand of the law can extend no farther than this door. Beside this door is a mahogany slab which has been worn away to a depth of two inches by the kisses of the faithful. When they kiss this wall, they believe they are kissing Muhammad himself. And note that slot. More than two billion francs have been dropped into this coin box. Now I will show you the sacred tree of Ujda. Any Mohammedan woman desiring to have a son makes a pilgrimage to this tree, to which she ties a piece of ribbon. Every year, the tree is weighted down by the pieces of ribbon attached to it. Yet in spite of this, the female population of Morocco still exceeds the male. And the stone's throw away is the tomb of St. John the Divine. And here is the tree said to have been planted by him. Every Mohammedan believes that he lies buried here. But they do not call him St. John, but Sidi Yahya. And he's an apostle of the Muslim religion. To be cross-eyed is considered a sign of divine favor in Morocco. <laughs> Mohammed's six wives were cross-eyed, and so was his mother-in-law. <laughs> that is why these natives consider themselves blessed. And if you can get one of them to look you straight in the eye, then you too will be blessed, provided you can prove that he's looking at you. Now, uh, just which one of you is this fellow looking at? Here's a blessed event. Now meet young Mr. Ben Ali Turpin. More than 750 years ago, the Sultan Yaqub El Mansur built this tower and placed in the mortar 960 bags of musk. And today, the scent still is fragrant, and you can smell it after seven centuries. 
And here we have another African curiosity, which has probably been smelling more than 800 years, and it's not musk either, but a village of haystacks in Satat, Morocco, where they make hay, hay hay, while the sun shines. This is not a haystack, but a residence. Let me introduce you to this man and his family. He supports them all on 10 cents a day, proving that nine can live as cheaply as one, providing the other eight starve. You've heard of old tin cans being put to various uses, including the manufacture of automobiles, but here's the tin can in a new role. This is Bidonville, the tin can city of Casablanca, North Africa. All the thousands of homes in this city are made out of discarded American tin cans, and the people are crowded into them like <laughs> sardines. The buildings are made of cans of all kinds, gasoline cans, garbage cans, oil cans, and uh, just cans. Every man's home is his castle, but I'd hate to think what would happen to my friend here if he were locked out at night and had forgotten his can opener. <laughs> the walls of the city of Meknes were built for the Sultan Mullah Ismail by white Christian slaves, 50,000 of whom were beheaded by the Sultan himself and embedded in the mortar. And this is the harem of the Sultan Mullah. He had 83 brothers and 124 sisters. And in this building lived 3,000 of his wives. He was the father of 888 children, the greatest family man of all time. I will now show you what he looked like. If you please, uh, boy, hand me that paper. That's right. You would think by raising such a family, he wouldn't have much time to raise anything else. Yet he raised more cane than any other sultan of his period. And here he is, 3,000 wives, 888 kids. What a man. And while we're on the subject of wives, let me show you one of the most unique matrimonial institutions in the world. In Algeria, when a wife goes up in the air, she doesn't land on her husband, but in jail. And this is it, the Algerian jail for nagging wives. Sounds like a good idea. And a very cheap one, too, for all it costs a husband to keep his wife in jail is eight cents a day. For a dollar a day, a man could take care of a dozen of his wives. And here we have the nigers in the who's gown. Fatima is saying that marriage is not only a serious word in any language, but a sentence. In ancient times, an Algerian punished a nagging wife by cutting off her head. But the modern Algerian believes that the pen is mightier than the sword. And now, I will hope you'll all watch for my next Believe It or Not picture, taken in strange and remote corners of the world. <laughs>